Welcome to Inside Games Digest, the only show brave enough to ask the burning question, how's it going with Star Citizen? How, where are we? What's 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 the latest? And and there is there is actual news to report here, so sit tight. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get the gumption up to ask about Star Citizen. It's only been what, 10 years? Ooh. Oh, that's that's fine. And what has become fairly common for Star Citizen developers, they are apologizing for a super rough start to the game's latest update, Alpha 3.18. It was released recently, it was a big deal for the game. It's been in development since The Office was still on air, so people have been waiting for it for a while. Yeah, the devs called this the game's biggest update yet. It added features like immersive careers, stunning locations, and thrilling gameplay, so that does sound meaty. Gameplay! All right, great. Most importantly, and this is the thing I was super excited about, the update implemented something called persistent entity streaming, which means objects can be dynamically tracked when moved by players. Yeah, it's it's a, a big step towards, you know, making a persistent universe, which obviously Star Citizen is. As the devs put it, the latest patch holds the key to true in-game persistence, one of the biggest hurdles in the pursuit of a living universe that evolves alongside its inhabitants. Yeah, mostly just means trash. All the stuff that players use and throw away, it just lands on the ground and stays there. So there's just piles of trash everywhere. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell, Star Citizen has been eagerly awaited by its backers who, not surprisingly, rushed in to check this new patch out. Yeah, and uh, it was a disaster. Uh, the, putting it nicely, it was a mess. Yeah, I, I tried. I tried and gave up quickly. I guess my expectations are low. But yeah, the launcher struggled to accommodate all the new traffic, and it was very un unresponsive to many players, myself included. Lots of others were flooded with error codes as they tried unsuccessfully to log in over and over and over again. And on Monday, developer Cloud Imperium Games was forced to take the game completely offline so they could obviously make fixes. In a tweet, the dev said, We're sorry for the super rough start. Our team is all hands on deck, working to get things running smoothly as quickly as possible. But problems persisted even by the end of this week. I checked the game was still having partial outages, so it's not completely fixed by a long shot. Yeah, takes a while to spin up a whole universe, I guess. Well, I guess just one solar system, but universe is next. <laughs> Players were annoyed, as you might imagine. On the game's official forums, one player, Admiral Grogan, just went off on the devs. There's always at least one, you know? Yeah, and he's a high-ranking officer. He's an admiral, so I mean, this it carries more weight. Uh, specifically, Admiral Admiral Grogan said, this is embarrassingly bad, even by Star Citizen standards. Ouch, I've been a backer since day one. I'm not going anywhere, but after all this time, we don't have our blank together to release a mess like this. Yeah, yeah, it's an alpha, blah, blah, blah. The issue I have is after this many years, why are these same problems happening every single patch? Oh, well said. Thank you for your service, Admiral Grogan. It's now been more than a decade since famed developer Chris Roberts started the Star Citizen funding campaign. Since then, it's raised over half a billion dollars, 555 million the last time we checked. Yeah, and uh, the online game still currently in alpha. That's the one we've been talking about. And they split it off and a single player portion, Squadron 42, uh, still in development. So get comfortable. Big budget Wing Commander follow up with what they got like, they got Mark Hamill and Daniel Day-Lewis. Jillian Anderson. Jeez. Uh, um, it's a it's a star-studded cast for sure. All right, next up, the FTC wants way more info on Microsoft's deals that they've been throwing around. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission wants to take a closer look at Microsoft's recent 10-year deals with Nintendo and NVIDIA. According to documents filed recently, the FTC says it wants Microsoft to produce details of the several agreements they recently signed. Yeah, I do too. Uh, this is going to be great. So this is a pretty complicated story, but the summary is that the FTC is suing to block Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, and a trial over that is expected to start in August. Yeah, you'll probably know a lot of this, but according to Video Games Chronicle, the FTC alleged that Microsoft intends to use these recent deals with Nvidia and Nintendo to justify the acquisition to regulators. I feel like that's probably accurate, yeah. Yeah, of course, yes. That's exactly why they're doing it. It wrote, quote, despite clearly intending to use these agreements in its defense, Microsoft has refused to produce underlying internal documents related to these agreements or communications with third parties other than Nvidia, Nintendo, and Sony. They added that Microsoft should not be permitted to introduce or rely on these agreements without producing the requested underlying discovery, meaning they gotta show us the documents if they're gonna use this in an argument that we shouldn't, that we should approve this merger. 
Yeah, they have to see the terms of the deal and make sure that it's fair. Makes sense to me, yeah. Meanwhile, Microsoft isn't done making these licensing agreements. They signed yet another 10-year agreement to stream Xbox PC games, as well as Activision Blizzard games, with the Japanese cloud gaming company Ubitus. And Ubitus, this is interesting because they power a lot of the cloud games on the Switch, including Guardians of the Galaxy, Hitman 3, Control, and Resident Evil Village. Yeah, these deals are part of a strategy by Microsoft to show they'll share their goodies with other platforms, or at least for the your future. Give a little juice to the their competitors in both the cloud streaming space and the console space. At least for 10 years they're going to do it. Also interesting note uh, to this ongoing saga, the FTC has also asked for all documents related to exclusivity of content Microsoft acquired from ZeniMax and exclusivity of content Microsoft proposes to acquire from Activision. Interesting. ZeniMax of course was the parent company of Bethesda and some other developers did software and things like that, which Microsoft acquired in 2021. Yeah, and they uh, uh, obviously Starfield is coming out and they're making that exclusive. And so Sony and others are like, see, look, you can't trust them. So FTC is gonna look into all of it. Next up, critics love the Resident Evil 4 remake. It's apparently very good. The remake is out next week. The much anticipated remastering of the legendary 2005 survival horror game. Well, embargoes are up, the reviews are in. And what did the critics think? Well, they loved it. They loved it all over again. Everybody did pretty much. It's got a 93 last time I checked on Metacritic, obviously very, very good. Yeah, IGN gave it a 10. Solid gold, saying the remake, quote, is the series most relentlessly exciting adventure rebuilt, refined, and realized to the full extent of its enormous potential. Jeez, that's a lot. True, I know. That is glowing. GameSpot also gave it a perfect score, saying that it, quote, raises the bar for what a good remake is, and at the same time, preserves Resident Evil 4's legacy as a genre-defining experience and one of the greatest games of all time. And Polygon wrote, that for all the rough edges that it smooths over, Resident Evil 4 pulls off the same trick that Resident Evil 2 did in 2019, making a groundbreaking but now dated game feel brand new again. It's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, the remake is just around the corner. It releases March 24th. Capcom's back. I played a little Exo Primal and actually really liked it too, so. Oh, nice. Uh, although what's not looking up is the digestive health of a bunch of Super Smash Brothers players and, and more than usual. This isn't the usual like Easy Mac and Little Caesars Hot and Ready that's constantly coursing through through the bloodstream of our favorite esports pros. No, this was a Smash tournament that made a lot of people sick. This is a colorful story to end on, a little little human culture at the end. Yeah, this was the Collision 2023 tournament. It took place earlier this month in New Jersey, and it involved both Super Smash Brothers Melee and Ultimate. Hmm. It featured well-known Smashers like Hungry Box and MK Leo, but you know what else got smashed? People's digestive systems. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. I'm That's so a good one, Brian. That was really good. <laughs> After the event, several attendees tweeted about a stomach bug they say they caught at the event. No, oh, I had this and it was bad, yeah. Not at the Smash tournament. This was Thanksgiving with the in-laws, but I feel for him. Hungry Box wrote that after he got home, he had, quote, some of the worst food poisoning ever. He claimed that he lost 10 pounds in seven hours. Great new diet plan. Yeah, that's that's actually what I lost. I went down about 10 pounds over two days. Dang, yeah, food poisoning is the worst. Uh, some in particular blamed a chicken sandwich sold at the tournament. Otherwise, have, others have suggested that the event might have been infected with the norovirus, which is extremely contagious and mirrors the stomach flu. Since it was Jersey, I guess maybe Artie from Vesuvio catered it, got, gave him some bad chicken. I don't know. That's a fun Sopranos reference. I don't know if y'all like that, but it's a great show. It's a bunch of Smash players that aren't going to be eating chicken sandwiches for a while. Ugh. Once you get that association, you know that food is just dead to you. You're just gone. Yeah, that there's like a genre of food. Yep, yep, can't have it. Well, good news though. It is just temporary. Uh, I can attest. The Ill illness usually lasts one to three days. For me, it was about three. Let me tell you that first full meal you can keep down after a run like that is just heavenly. You feel like you've ascended. Then you gain all that 10 pounds back and you're like, oh, damn. Oh yeah, it comes back pretty quick. But man, <laughs> you're, you're looking good in the meantime. This is why I just, <laughs> I want to get a tapeworm. Just a friendly little tapeworm. Getting the norovirus or a tapeworm sucks, but the sick ass abs you get from it doesn't suck at all. They're built in the kitchen, baby. All right, let's do an extremely fast review. Is the ultimate warrior in this? Because if not, I'm not playing it. Oh wait, it is. I'm playing it. 
Here are all the games that are coming out next week. First, we're starting with Deceive Incorporated. Go undercover as the world's greatest spies in this tense multiplayer game of subterfuge. Disguise as anyone, deploy an arsenal of high-tech gadgets, or neutralize the competition. As long as you extract with the objective, no trick is too dirty when you work for Deceive Incorporated. This comes to Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC on March 21st. Next up, Chia. This is a tropical open world adventure. You climb, glide, swim, and sail your boat around a beautiful archipelago in this physics-driven sandbox. Take control of any animal or object you can find and jam on your ukulele. Fully playable, heck yeah. It comes to PS5, PS4, and PC March 21st. Have a Nice Death is a 2D action roguelike where you play as an overworked death whose employees have run rampant, completely throwing off the balance of souls and his vacation plans. In order to restore order, you'll have to grab your trusty scythe and show your employees who's boss. Have a Nice Death comes to the Switch on March 22nd. Omen of Sorrow brings monsters of horror, literature, and mythology together for a fighting game experience unlike any other. It's inspired by numerous arcade classics, but offers its own unique innovations and mature aesthetics. Omen of Sorrow positively bleeds style. It comes to the PS5, Switch, and the PC March 23rd. Next up, Storyteller. Experience some of history's greatest stories like never before. Storyteller is an award-winning reactive puzzle game that lets you build the story. Storyteller's charming animations and comic panel design allows for a unique puzzle mechanic. Use your wits to retell iconic tales or experiment and find something new. Storyteller comes to the Switch and PC on March 23rd. Next up, Atelier Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key. That is a $5 title. The story begins when a group of islands called the Kark Isles appear near Ryza's, the protagonist's hometown. Seeing this as a threat, Ryza and her friends investigate the isles and discover ruins with a huge gate. Just as Ryza approaches the gate, a strange voice echoes in her head, telling her to reach the code of the universe. What is it that lies beyond the gate, and what does the code of the universe mean? In hopes of finding a way to save their home, Ryza and her friends set off on a great adventure that revolves around a key and the roots of alchemy. Comes to Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC March 24th. The Atelier games have been coming out for, what, 15 years now? Oh, yeah. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I remember buying one on PS2, playing it for like an hour, and never going back to it. But man, I didn't expect that series to just keep going. Speaking of keeping going, MLB The Show 23. This game gets you closer than ever to living your baseball dreams on the diamond. Shock the game and own the show with your favorite players, your favorite rivalries, and all your favorite MLB moments. MLB The Show 23 comes to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and the Switch on March 24th. They should have a T-ball option, and your player shouldn't be able to hit anything but the T. That was my athletic career. Was not I was not invited to the show. Anyway, last but not least, as we said before, the Resident Evil 4 remake. Resident Evil 4 2005's legendary survival horror game is brought fully up to date in this ground up remake. Six years after the events of Resident Evil 2, Raccoon City survivor Leon Kennedy has been dispatched to a secluded European village to investigate the disappearance of the president's daughter, the US president that is. What he discovers there is unlike anything he has faced before. Every aspect of the classic game has been updated for the current generation, from modernized graphics and controls to a reimagined storyline that may surprise even hardened fans of the original game. It comes to the PS5, Xbox Series, X and S, and PC March 24th. That's all the news we've got for you this week, guys. Hope you're having a great weekend. Thank you to all our supporters on Patreon. We will see you soon.